This video is brought to you by YT Andrew Paul Tech Repairs. If you have a console, laptop, computer or Macbook in need of repair in the UK or the EU then have a look in the description below this video for details on how to contact us in order to organise your repair. Right, hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video and today we're going to be taking a look at this PS4 Pro with some rather strange AV output issues. So, as you can see there, just about where my finger is, you can see the white light here. And you can also see that the display is doing some rather funky things. So, we can see we have a black screen, generally speaking. And if we look in this bottom right-hand corner of my monitor, you can see there's a solid red light. A solid red light means that it is, indeed, detecting a signal on the input. But we're also seeing where it's flashing in and out, saying intermittently that it has no signal, and it also comes up every now and again saying that the signal it does receive is out of range. So whatever's going on in this machine, there is something that it isn't particularly happy with with regards to its HDMI output circuit. So this is the first PS4 Pro we've had on the channel, and... There you go, you see, you can just about see there, look, it's decided it's got no signal, then it comes back in. You can see the light remains solid. So it's almost as if the sink is looping around, but it's taking it a while to do. You can see that it just flashed up a little box, I don't know if you noticed that there. Um, that was a really, really quick uh, out of sync, uh, out of range, sorry, out of range message. So there's obviously something going on here. So the HDMI port itself looks physically intact and looks perfect. So this is likely going to be something along the lines of the EMI filters or the HDMI encoder IC within this PlayStation. So what we'll do is we'll take it apart. We'll get the board out. There we go, look out of range there. Yeah, so we'll get the board out of this machine. We'll get it on the desk and we'll take a look and we'll take it from there. So uh, John is in a sec. We'll see what we can find. Right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, so as we can see here, we have our NVA001 revision motherboard from our PS4 Pro out on our desk now. And we're going to go right over to the top side. So here's the APU, we're going past there, right to the top end, and here's where our HDMI port lives. So, as you can see there, everything looks all in, in shape there with the pins and everything. Doesn't look to be anything untoward there. Everything's absolutely fine, as we can tell. Yep, no problem at all. So, just behind there, we have these weird-looking things. Now, anybody who's been in a in a PS4 before now, even the Slims will know. Well, anybody who's been in a Slim will actually recognise these, because they're the same. But anybody who's been in a, an older PS4, without taking a look in any of the new Slim or Pro, will think... They probably will actually recognise them, actually, but um, they do look a little bit different to the ones we're used to. And indeed, those are our EMI filters in this new design PS4. So, they work exactly the same as the others. They're just a slightly smaller form factor, I do believe. Um, so, let's have a look then. So, what we should be doing is, these four components here are our EMI filters, one for each... Uh, TMDS line. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look and see if these are reading what they should do. So, what we're going to do is each one of these should read top left to bottom left, top right to bottom right. What they shouldn't do is they shouldn't read continuity across left to right. That is a big no-no. That means the coils inside are shorted and the component is bad. Likewise, if we get an open circuit between top left, bottom left or top right, bottom right, then indeed it's also bad and needs to be replaced. So let's take a look then. So our multimeter is currently in continuity mode. That is the mode where the thing beeps. when the two probes are touched together. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into this first filter. We're going to put our probe on the one on the bottom left and one on the top left, and we're going to see if we get a beep. We do. We're going to move one of these probes now across. So we're measuring left to right. We get OL, open line, no beep. That's good. And what we'll do now is we'll measure the right-hand side. As you can see, we get a beep. Less than one ohm continuity, fantastic. So on to the next one. Top left to bottom left, we get a beep. Less than one ohm, cool. Go across left to right, we get nothing. And top top right, bottom right, we get less than one ohm. Okay, that's good. Third one in. Top left to bottom left. Continuity. Right to left, no continuity, open line, excellent. And 
the right hand side coil is given continuity which is good so that's good and finally this one okay top left to bottom left is continuity right to left is nothing and so right bottom right gives continuity. So all four of those EMI filters are testing good. All four of those EMI filters are working and have absolutely no problem. So if our HDMI port itself is good, our EMI filters it's themselves are all good, where can be the problem? More often than not, if you look a little bit further down, you'll see this little thing here. Look familiar to anybody? Panasonic MN864729. Of course, anybody who has been in a older 1200 PS4 onwards, either slim or indeed a pro, will indeed recognise this as being the usual suspect HDMI encoder that they've been using for the last couple of years. And indeed, it's the same in the pro as it is in the older 1200s or the slim. So if you've got one of those kicking around, then you can half inch the encoder I see from that board, pop it on here, and you should be good to go. So what we're going to do is, bearing in mind that we know the port's good, and we also know the EMI filters are good, we're going to change this encoder IC, and hopefully then we'll be able to get some picture out of our PlayStation. And then this can go back to its owner, who can carry on with their mammoth gaming sessions on their very, very nice machine. A machine I don't have. I'm very jealous. <laughs> um, I really, really would love a PS4 Pro. To be honest, it's one of these things that... I'd also like an Xbox One X, but... I don't really play on them. This is the thing. I buy them and I have them because it's nice to have them there as an option to use on an evening. But I really, really don't... Don't do gaming. Okay, so what this is... This is Amtex NC559 uh, V2TF. This is very, very good uh, flux. So what this does is essentially it helps to wet our solder joints and helps to aid the solder to flow so basically it gets this lead uh, free solder this horrible stuff off the board a little bit easier so we're just going around here just making sure that each pin in turn is coated in the stuff and hopefully then that's all looking nice okay so, next job is to get our air wand and some fume extraction. So, this is not the hardest process in the world to do when you're used to it. Um, if you've never done one of these QFN style encoder ICs, then yeah, I'd I find an older machine to practice on before you start um, cobbling together with your PS4 Pro there, because <laughs> they are... Um, you know, they're expensive, aren't they? That's partly one of the reasons I haven't bought one yet. Like I say, I can't really justify the cost. Because I don't really use it. Um, but if I could find a faulty one and get it repaired or, you know, something like that, then I probably would go for it. At the minute at home, I'm using a 1200 series PS4. I originally had a launch day unit. And I bought the 1200 from eBay, as it was supposedly um, locking up in Dash. That turned out to be a bad hard drive. So I just replaced the hard drive, sold my launch unit and kept that one. And if I've used it five hours, <laughs> that was probably 12 months easily ago, then... Uh, you know. So yeah, it's a waste of time me having them to be fair, but I always like to have them. Like a magpie. I like shiny things. So what we're doing here is we're just going around the air one set at four hundred and ninety degrees C at hundred litres of airflow per minute. And we're just going round the footprints of the IC, just making sure everything here is getting warmed up uniformly. We're not concentrating the heat in one area for too long. We're just going around making sure everything's molten. Now then, you'll notice that the pins on the outside edge start to flow before the chip moves. And it looks like they're all flowed. But underneath the centre of this chip, if you've never seen one before, is a massive great big ground pad. 
and you have to get that up to temperature before it'll come away and uh, basically these boards are very very thick they have a lot of copper and uh, the ground plane is pretty big so what happens is is that it just ends up saturating heat out of the board and away from the from the chip so what we need to do is we need to saturate the board with heat in the area of the IC to get it to uh, actually start to lift here for us that can also make it harder to get the thing reseated at the end so be patient don't go tugging it don't go pulling on it just be patient okay and you'll notice that if you are patient eventually it'll just start to lift and there you go that's as hard as it has to be so if you do start pulling at it then you end up running the risk of uh, doing quite a bit of damage so if I'm if I'm honest you can end up pulling pads out of the board and it's just that's not something you want to deal with on this circuit so what we're going to do now is we're going to get rid of the lead solder sorry the lead free solder that's on the board at the moment so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to get our soldering iron tip changed here to a fairly big one I do want a smaller tip than this I'm gonna to have to go shopping on Kaiser Tech I think and just see what they've got that's slightly smaller than this one I've got like a, a fine tip and I've got this fairly big one but I don't have one in between and I could probably do with it for doing jobs like this so we're just gonna go in and we're just gonna start to wick away the existing solder okay So we've still got some flux on the board which is helping to encourage the lead free stuff to flow up onto our desolder braid. You don't have to get this perfect at this point but the less of it you have on there the easier it's going to make your life later on. So. I'm just going to pop a little tiny bit more down here. knocking you everywhere at the moment so I do apologize see I like I say you know it doesn't have to be perfect at this point but the more of it you get the easier this is gonna make your life later on trust me so we're just wicking away whatever's on that ground pad okay that's that done so what we're gonna do now we're gonna come in with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol this is a solvent basically which is very very good for removing flux residue and solder residue and things like that from circuit boards so we're just gonna go around and get the biggest part of it we don't have to be too pristine at this point because we are just going to muck it up again in a sec but as you can see here we have our board and everything looks nice so what we're going to do we're just going to come back in with it again with a bit more flux at this point some nice clean fresh stuff just going to pop it on the contact pads and we'll put a little bit in the middle so now what we're going to do is we have some leaded solder and we're going to change the lead free stuff so we're just going to pop a dab of that in the center there it's probably more than enough to be honest okay and what we're going to do now is we're going to go around the outside edge and we're just going to tin the other contacts up 
Now then, I'm not so sure how well this tip's going to do this. But we'll give it a try. That's what I could do with one in between, really. So we're just going to go on here. And we're just going to run our leaded solder across the pads on our motherboard. And make sure we have a nice uniform coating on all our pads here. Which we do. So now we'll go across the top. Same sort of thing. You'll notice that some of these pads are a little bit more reluctant to take solder than the others. That's usually because they've got a big, nice copper plane behind them. Probably ground pads or something like that. Or power. So, I'm just going further down now. And then we're just going to do this bottom edge. Okay, so that's it. All right, okay, then, guys and girls. So, sorry about the uh, interlude there. Somebody just walked in on me. But um, here we go. So, as we can see there, we have everything now back up where we need it to be. We have all the pads now around the outside edge, all coated in solder. And what I also do these days is this is a new IC, but I have a, put a small coating of solder on each of the pads and a little bit on the center pad and for reasons that I'll explain in a second but it just seemed to make putting these things down a lot easier if you do that so that's what I tend to do these days so I just pop a little bit of solder underneath them because it seems to help them make a lot easier surface tension between the two so the solder on the pads and the solder on the chip just seems to sort of amalgamate and just draws it in a lot easier than it would be if you leave the pads bare. When you get the chips new, they come bare. They have no solder on them. So I just put a little bit on them just to uh, encourage them to, to take a little bit quicker. Okay, so what we're going to do is we just... We still have the flux on the outside edge of the, where the IC sits. You can see that now. So what we're going to do, we're just going to reflow this solder. We're just going to get it up to temperature so that it flows my apologies if I block your view here but it's a bit of a necessary evil so what we're doing here we're just getting the temperature of the board around where the new IC is going to sit up to temperature that's going to mean that when we have the chip in situ we're not going to have to hit it with as much heat to get the thing to flow because the board around it is already up to temperature so you can see there that our centre pad now is flattened out nicely. We don't have that big mound in the middle anymore. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come in with our IC. And we're going to line it up yeah, somewhere close. Okay, and then we're just going to come in with a little bit of heat. Now we're just going to start to work this heat into the board. So at this point, it doesn't have to be perfect. All we're looking to do is get it somewhere close. So usually what I do is, as I'm looking at this now, obviously my eyeballs are coming from this angle. So I'm just looking at the front pads here and lining them up. And what we're doing now, is we're just flowing this into position. Okay. Right. Okay. So... I mean, 
this is easier the more you do it. So the more practice you get, the easier this becomes. So at this point, we should be lined up on this edge. Okay? So we should be lined up perfectly on that edge. And I'm not so sure how well this is going to work. But you can see there now, look, we have a really nice solder pattern between the pad and the edge of the chip on that side. Okay? So that's the benefit of putting solder on both the pads and the IC. Because once they melt together, it just helps them bond. And then the solder just sort of sucks the chip into position. So you can see here, without actually having checked these other three sides, we're already largely in position here. So I'm just going to go and have a, a quick look off camera here to see what the orientation of the rest of our pins look like. And they actually look okay, you know. We're not, we're not a million mile away at all here. No, that's looking quite good. Okay, that's excellent. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit more flux just off camera here while I've got it closer to me because it's easier to do this when it's sat close rather than it being right at arm's length underneath the microscope camera. But all I'm doing is I'm just putting another bead of flux around the edge of the IC. Just here, look. That's all I'm doing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in with the heat. And I'm just going to flow this again now. And hopefully what this is going to do with the added flux is it's just going to encourage our leaded solder to flow and just finish off sighting this chip. So I'm looking for the solder to go shiny around the edges, which it is doing. Obviously our board is already up to temperature underneath. We know that because we've melted the solder on that ground pad before we sighted the chip. So we shouldn't have to work it too hard. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to come in here at the last minute and we're going to put a little bit of downwards pressure. Oh, that's always the possibility, of course, is you can knock the alignment, which is what I've just done. So if you do that, yes, it's annoying, but don't be too disheartened. Just drag it back with the tweezer blade. Okay, and I'll show you in a minute. You still notice there, I just dragged it back. But it's kind of weird because you can kind of feel that as you move it yourself, you can feel the solder underneath on the pads kind of help you out. You can kind of feel that something is helping you drag that IC. And that's the surface tension. So as you try to pull the chip back, it's kind of like it's the opposite of resistance. You don't feel resistant. You kind of feel as though you've got another pair of hands helping you with an extra tweezer blade and that's the um, that's the surface tension pulling the IC so as you get these pads into position the solder sucks the pads into itself so what you end up with is a nice uniform sighting and as you can see there we knocked it out of position there because we were a little bit clumsy with it but you can see there look that looks perfect Nice bonding of solder, nice uniform coating there between pad and the outside edge of the pin. You can't see the other side because of the uh, the pool of flux around it, but we'll sort that out in a sec. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a little bit of IPA here to the edge. And this is always easier to do while the board's warm, because once it cools down, it can be a little bit of a git to get the flux residue off, because it just sticks. And then you're going to be sat there scrubbing it for a good old while. So this is always easier to do. Of course, it also helps cool the area of, the, you know, we're working in down. The, the alcohol evaporates and draws heat out of the board. So as you apply it, it actually cools the IC in the board. So you're going to work fairly quickly, but once you do, absolutely fine. So we're just going to go around and get the last little remnants of this. Okay, so essentially now we should be good to go here. So you can see there, look, that looks nice. That looks lovely. Okay, so we've got a nice mated surface there between the edge of the pad and pin. And everything's nice and straight. So that should be fine now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put this back in the chassis, fire it up, give it a test, and hopefully should be good to go. 
All right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm going to try and be quick now because the phone camera is on its backside. But as we can see there now, we have our machine fired up there, a little white light just above my finger. And we have output to display. Fantastic. So let's just see if we can get this into boot because it did go down into safe mode. Ah, oh, no. It's going to want... Is it going to want to install the OS, do we think? It was in safe mode, to be fair. Um, the first time we booted it up, so I'm not thinking we're going to see much of a change here. <sighs> so yeah, the first time we actually started the machine in the testing phase before we actually replaced the IC, although it's blind, we've done so many of these things now, we know exactly what it's doing, even without being able to see on the screen. We you try to power it down, it gives three beeps, and it does that in safe mode. Uh, and sure enough, when we plug the controller and hit the PS button and pressed X, it shut down. So it was definitely in safe mode before, and now it's booting to safe mode. So it's going to need the OS reinstalling on this machine, which isn't really a problem, apart from the fact that um, I'm not sure I have 555 downloaded on my USB stick. <laughs> uh, right, okay, what I'll do is I'll go pop it on my USB stick, and then I'll install it, and we'll show you it back in the OS, because... Uh, like I said, the phone camera is on its backside battery-wise, and it could quit at any point. So, um, yep, I'll go do that now. We'll fire it up. We'll take a look at it back in OS. We'll nail it back together, and then this can go back to its owner. So uh, join us in a second, boys and girls, and hopefully we'll have some 1080p goodness back in the OS. All right, again, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are. And as you can see, we have everything nailed back together there. Oh, yes, we do. USB stick actually went in the back. It my uh, my USB stick doesn't fit in the front port. You learn, don't you? So, uh, <laughs> at least there's a rear one. It does work absolutely fine in the rear one. So, if you find yourself in the same scenario, just have a look on the back. And there's plenty of clearance around the one on the back and everything works fine. So, that's why it's facing the other way. But, uh, as you can see there now, look, everything on the display is working lovely. So, it looks like at some point, somebody's either changed this hard disk or they've initialised it. Because... <sighs> It have not had no OS on it. So let's just try to uh, sync this and run through the first time setup here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's just skip through this as best we can. Okay. Lovely. There we go. Now, hopefully, we should be back in the OS now. There we go. We're happy once we see that main menu. And there we go. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can see there, what we've done today is we have successfully replaced the HDMI encoder of IC on this PlayStation Pro motherboard with the MN864729 QFN style encoder of IC. So that's the same package as you'll find on the 1200 PS4s. Uh, you'll find those on the Slims as well as the Pro. It's all the same chip. So if you have a, an old 1200 board kicking around or, you know, or some dodgy Slim board kicking around somewhere and you need an IC, feel free to take it. And as you can see, it works absolutely beautifully in the Pro as well. So it will support 4K. So they all do. It's just that the Pro is the only one that uses it because obviously it needs the extra grunt from the APU. The actual restriction isn't down to the encoder. The encoder will handle it nicely. Regardless, it's uh, it's just the, the spec of the APU and the rest of the machine, the extra bump in RAM that the Pro has over everything else, which dictates what resolution you can get out of it. So uh, just in case anybody is wondering whether you can therefore get a, a slim or a 1200 series machine to display in 4K, sadly, no, you can't. Um, but anyway, as you can see here now, we're all up and running and everything's absolutely fine once more. And uh, that's that. So this afternoon has been interesting because I've been working on a machine just now that's absolutely encrusted with fly feces and a couple of dead flies. Um, so yes, it's not been the most pleasant day in here today. Uh, it's needless to say, that board's been through the ultrasonic. But... Um, Anyway, this one was absolutely fine. This this machine is actually really nice and clean and there wasn't a speck of dust inside it. So I don't know how long it's been, uh, the customer's been using it, whether it's a more of a, well, it can't be a new machine, I wouldn't imagine, because it'd be straight back under warranty. But um, yes, you know, it's nice to see that some people do look after the machines and whoever uh, has this machine looks after it very well indeed. So if you are watching this, then uh, thumbs up, bud. 
keep it lovely. But um, yes, so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've uh, found this useful and you've enjoyed it. If you have, if you could just stick a big thumbs up and a like down below, that helps me massively. Essentially, these days, the way that YouTube works is the more people like a video, um, essentially what it does is it works out the algorithms in the background and decides that that video must be really good and therefore it's worthy of showing to a lot more users and um, basically the more people see the channel the more, cha the more the channel grows the more channel grows the more videos i make that's the way that this works so if you've uh, enjoyed this and you like it and you like the content generally on the channel if you could stick me a like down below that would be very very much appreciated likewise if you haven't already subscribed then please feel free to do so. If you have a new viewer, and this is the first video of ours you've seen, then feel free to check out our other content. We've got pretty much 100 videos on here these days, all fiddling in PlayStations, Xboxes, and everything else. It's a couple of MacBooks, one or two iPhone videos. Not that I really work on iPhone, but there you go. But yes, um, like I say, I'm sure if you're bored and uh, you've not seen much of our content before now, then uh, have a look through what we've got on there, and I'm sure you'll find something else to while away a little bit of time one boring Sunday afternoon or something so uh, yes and again that would be very much appreciated so if you have any questions at all then feel free to pop them below in the comments I do try to get through them as quickly as I can likewise if you've got something you'd rather send me in private then you can do on Twitter my inbox is open to everybody there it's uh, my in my YouTube YouTube my Twitter handle there is uh, YT Andrew Paul so at YT Andrew Paul and you can drop me a DM box in there it's open to everybody you don't have to follow me for that you should just work and uh, like I say, I do try to pick them up as quickly as I can as well. If you are in the UK or the EU and you'd like us to repair your machine, regardless of whether it's a PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, whatever the hell it might be, then feel free to have a look in the description below. You'll find our email address in there. It's whiteyandrewpaul at outlook.com. That's my business email address, ladies and gentlemen. So if you need a repair of your own in the UK or the EU, then feel free to drop me uh, an email in there with your problem and your location, and I'm sure we can hopefully get a good price to you for that. Likewise, if you are anywhere else in the world, we can't unfortunately offer you a repair service, but what we can do is we can offer you components to repair your own machine or to give them to some other repair shop to repair your machine, or if you are indeed like me, um, in the business these days, then of course we can happily supply business to business. So again, just hit me up on that email address and we'll see what we can do. The website, I know I keep saying this, but it's been manic. My missus is expecting a second child next month. So, um, it's all the go at the moment. So, uh, the website's kind of, yeah, cause obviously I've still got all these machines to work through. So the development time on the website has been non-existent this last couple of weeks. I don't actually have to do that much left to it. Um, hopefully I'll get a chance to do it in the next couple of weeks and if I do, happy days but likewise, if you need components or you need a repair then, as I say, feel free to drop us an email down below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can so thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen I've been Andy Paul, this PS4 Pro is back in the land of the living and can now merrily wang its way back to its owner so thank you very much for watching I've been Andy Paul, you've been fantastic as always and I will see you not in the not so distant future on the next video so for me for now it's bye bye many thanks for watching then ladies and gentlemen hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you have then why not check out these recommendations below also please remember to comment rate and of course subscribe to the channel if you found this useful we've plenty more content on there and there's lots more to come